I believe that most of the world looking at whitetail hunting in West Virginia, I believe they just have this false uh, sense of reality um, or a false picture painted in their mind because they think that there's no potential to kill these huge deer in these mountains. There are giant deer, but you've got to be willing to put the, put the work in. Hunting mountain deer is not, is not an easy task because the terrain allows them to get older. There are more places for them to hide in these rugged steeps and this age that they are able to achieve causes them to be wiser and have that sixth sense. A lot of people think I hunt a lot, and that is as far from the truth as anything could be. I hunt, well, let's take last season for instance, I hunted five times. But I scout a tremendous amount so that I know when to hunt, so that I'm not over hunting areas, letting my presence be known. I only hunt a handful of times a year but scouting is, is the key because that's what gives you the intel to let you know when you need to hunt. When I begin my journey to pursue a mature deer in the mountains, whether it be a place that I've had for years that I'm, that I'm pursuing whitetails or a brand new area that I'm going into, I always start with maps. Hands down, no question about it, it's gonna save me thousands upon thousands of steps. It's gonna save me time and energy. It's gonna save presence that I'm putting out there. I'm gonna look at the, the geography, the topography, and I'm gonna to begin to set pins of where I think the deer will be bedding, where they'll be traveling, feeding, where I feel they'll rut during the, the mid season, where they'll be in the early season in vegetation feeding, where they'll be in the late season, those bedding areas, those late season feeding areas. I'm gonna identify all that from a map. Then I will really begin scouting in late season when all of the foliage is off, I can see the terrain features really well. I'll go out and start to look for scrapes that were laid down late season, late season rubs. I'm looking at that as that deer has survived and he's gonna be even bigger next year. So if I find that big mature deer sign, uh, I'm looking for the sheds to, so I can gauge what, what deer this is, and then I'm already getting in my mind, hey, this is, this is an area with potential next year. What? Uh, oh my God! Yes! Dude, look at that. I almost stepped on it. Holy crap! That's <laughs> it. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. Oh my gosh. Look at that old mountain. Dude. Me Megatron. How crazy looking is that? Look how tall it is. That's gotta be the deer he's talking that about. That makes me happy. No, he side. said it's got long beams. Well, he just said it was tall. He, he said it had long, big long tines. Yeah. Dude, what a great it hooks horn. back. I'm gonna have to tackle Cole right now because he's about to turn no, around and look for the I'm match. I'm not, I'm not. I ain't turning around. You look for it. <laughs> There's a tremendous amount of factors that play in for me to know that it is time for me to go in on a set. Uh, trail cameras are the number one way. That Watching my trail cameras and knowing when that, that specific deer that I'm hunting is starting to use in daylight or getting really close 
sometimes those deer will be using only nocturnal middle of the night and then as the season progresses and you know the doe are coming in uh, in the daylight then you'll start to see those bucks getting hold this evening he came in 15 minutes uh, after dark so I'm, I'm watching that really close then I'll know hey he's on my radar so within the next week or so I may have a window other things other than trail cameras are like barometric pressure moving barometric pressure with fronts coming in and leaving uh, temperature fluctuations are massive I love when it's been warm for a, a, a hot minute and then it just shifts a real hard 20 to 40 degree temperature drop I can always count on deer being on their feet during those hard shifts in temperature My strategy, I think, would be best described as an evolution. As I have, as I've become more mature as a, as a woodsman and a sportsman and as a hunter, I've began to see think, things that are more important in the game than just chasing big horns or big antlers. Years ago, when I first started chasing these mature deer, it was, it was a lonely place to be because I did it all by myself. I was sort of like the Lone Ranger going into these mountains and it was just very void of life. But then I realized as I started to be more involved in other people's process and they started being involved in my process, it was such a rich, full like thing that we had, a connection, a camaraderie, a bond. Like the outdoors is a, is a force, man, that can bring people together. And it should, it shouldn't be a place of division, it should be a place of unity. But we have to be determined to not allow hunting to come between and to divide. I have a policy within myself. I do not let the pursuit of any animal come between me and the relationship of any person. That is just, I live by that. And I've, I have learned that the hard way because in the past it has. I have allowed it to. But since I've had that policy and I've learned the importance of it, I've, I've been able to pass that along to others. The, these mountains, they, they, mean, they mean so much to me on so many levels. But one thing I always tell people, as far as in the pursuit of deer, I'll tell them it's very important to create areas of sanctuary for those deer to feel protected places where those deer aren't pressured. And I think one of the reasons I feel that I push that so much is because I know that that's what I get out of the mountains. I think that because it's my sanctuary, it's my place where I go into that I don't feel pressure, where I feel release from tension, where I feel healing from pain, where I work out the things in my mind that I can't figure out whenever there's chaos all around. When there, I have a phone in my face or a computer doing emails or I'm out at a job site. I can't work things out there. But in the woods, in the, in the wilderness, I can work that out. There's space for it, for my mind and my heart to connect. <laughs>